Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful video on this beautiful channel on this beautiful day. How are you guys and girls doing? Hope you're doing great as always. Please check out the description box, all the nice stuff, nice links down there, uh, Twitter, Discord, also support page, drop a like, subscribe if you like all the content, all right? So today what we got to do is we got to work with this smooth movement kind of thing, right? Realistic movement, really nice, smooth um and and just really makes it it look a lot better all right but it's a lot more intricate and to do that we need to do a little bit of cleanup um because we're going to use the move function here and also the movement component dot update so to fix that what i need to do is i need to go into my entity.cpp first step and i need to check if this movement component I think that's how it's spelled. Uh, this movement component update using delta time. And I did see another problem here is that when we, this is kind of weird, right? This move function uses DT first and this one does it afterwards. And it's kind of, kind of annoying. So we'll just go ahead and switch places with that uh, and do the same thing in the H file. Just remove this and put it right here. So there you go, now it looks a lot better. So we got the DT here and we got the DT here. And I think it's in game state.cpp where we call this. So we wanna pretty much uh, change that to actually having DT at the end. DT at the end. Like this, so it looks a lot more, you know, similar to the other stuff. So there you go. Uh, looks a lot nicer and we're good. Now we do player update, very important uh, because we'll be calling the entities update through that. That is actually the entities update because player doesn't have its own update, it inherits it. And we're updating the movement component. So step one complete, let's just run this and let's see if this works. And the movement component update doesn't really do anything right now. So I just wanna make sure it doesn't crash here. Uh, new game. All right, we can move the character. Okay, cool. So you'll see a big difference now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually control X that and put this in here. And I'm going to go ahead and say deceleration here. And I'm going to say uh, final move down here. Now, the thing that's going to happen is we're going to have acceleration, which we can add to the velocity at any time when we call this move function and deceleration will be constant. So we'll always be decelerating our velocity. Like, you know, friction and stuff like that. You can think of it like that. So basically basic physics. And then we'll do the final move after everything else is calculated. So what that lets us do is create a movement component that can add acceleration either in a move function or an impulse function. So really big amount of acceleration at once, loss of energy. And we can do all these kind of cool things with our, uh, with our movement. So, uh, so that's great, you know, and I put, I put this a step down here. Yours probably looks like this, but I just put it down here because I'm going to be adding a few things here. Float acceleration, float deceleration. And we're going to copy these two. And before we get going with that, we're just going to say acceleration, acceleration. And then, no, I do not want to insert, uh, hate that insert shit deceleration deceleration okay now it's going to complain a little bit uh, because our their vector 2 f's here you just change all of these to floats and no not the velocity sorry to change this to float and float okay and then we're going to just paste this crap in here the acceleration and deceleration. Also, I'm gonna control X these and put them up here because that feels more relevant to me. Perfect. Uh, float, acceleration, deceleration, acceleration, deceleration, perfect. And to get these values, actually it is in here where we need to add those as well. So const float, acceleration const float deceleration hope i spell that correctly 
gonna copy those put them in entity.h for the create movement component function so we can create them with different accelerations and stuff because you don't want all of your movement components to have the same um, acceleration and deceleration right so there you go now we can do that and I think it's in player player class where we actually create this so I'm gonna give it maybe a 5.f for acceleration 3.f for um, 3.f for thingy you know the thing the thingy majiggy deceleration and entity.cpp uh, movement component equals new delete this movement component I kind of forgot that this is very important just make sure you delete this movement component right here if it exists obviously it will be deleted and then we won't have any memory leaks so there you go now what we're gonna be working with close all but this is movement component cpp okay now we have our acceleration and deceleration now to show you quickly how this works just very quickly this isn't how we're gonna do it add a plus here to the x and the y and instead of max velocity say acceleration here acceleration okay and this will quickly show you kind of what kind of movement we want because we're adding to it slowly imagine you running in real life you're not going to get up to max speed in like one millisecond right it takes time and the same thing for deceleration when you want to slow down it takes a little time and you need to do this in game see how it's a lot smoother but we don't have any deceleration yet so it just keeps keeps on moving and moving and moving and we're doing this with vectors and that allows us to that gives us a lot of freedom in how we want to manage this and we don't have any max velocity kind of uh, um, fixes here so we're gonna have to do that after each one of these we have to check if it's overriding if it's going further than what we want so if this velocity dot x is greater than this max velocity then this max velocity no this velocity dot x equals this max velocity now this is only for one direction we need to do this for both directions so we need to do another if statement which checks which way we're actually going if this velocity is greater than 0 0.f so if we're going to the right okay if it's greater than we're gonna do a bunch of stuff we're gonna do actually do this if it's greater than then we'll check this else if it is less than max velocity check for the left um, max no check for left we're moving left check for right okay and this is basically just um, accelerating a sprite until it reaches the max velocity basically that's what it's doing so this is acceleration we're gonna accelerate it if we go above if we're moving to the right we'll make sure we set it to that else if it's moving to the uh, other side we'll set it to and if this is less than max velocity less than 0 0.f then we will say no uh, velocity equals minus this okay so pretty much for the x direction that is that is okay that is okay and we're also going to say this velocity this is for the deceleration this is the velocity x minus equals or in here we also have to check the direction which we're going um so we're gonna have to do this and to optimize this i could actually do this acceleration check in here to make sure we're not over going over the the max velocity because then we only have to check this if statement once instead of twice 
which would be nice, but still, let's just do this. So if we're going to the right, um, and this velocity becomes um, you now we're going to say this velocity then minus equals because then we're obviously positive dot x minus equals deceleration okay and if this velocity then after the negation becomes less than 0 0.f okay if we if we uh, subtract it too much we don't want it to go to the other side we just want it to stop so velocity to x equals 0 dot f and we're going to do the same thing for else if else if this velocity dot x is now less than 0 0.f we're going to in the other direction um, we're going to just paste all of this we're going to say plus equals deceleration we have to do the same thing for y as well but I'm just testing this out for x right now it makes it a little easier for the coding that's why I'm doing it so if we become greater than 0 we want to set it to 0 so let's just see if this will work for me. Oh, sorry about that. I just hit my mic so hard. I just slapped the shit out of my mic. Uh, so there we go. So we're just doing the X right now. See how it's kind of accelerating, but not above 10. See, and it's kind of slow, sluggish. It is, it is. And the way you can do fix that is actually just balance out how much the acceleration and de deceleration is. So let me set the max to 200. Let me set the acceleration to pretty quick and the deceleration to like four or something like that. So we'll constantly negate it and we'll be able to accelerate a little faster and we'll have a larger top speed. Whoops. See, that's a little, little more responsive. So there you go. We'll probably have a larger speed than that so we'll say probably something like that we'll keep that at four something like that we'll just keep it like that for now so that is the x direction i am pretty much ran out of time so in the next video we'll do the y direction and try to combine these together make sure we do it all in one single if statement so it makes it a little easier for us uh, but yeah thank you so much for watching i hope this helped this is kind of cool i love working with acceleration and physics and stuff so just remember we're working with vectors. Okay, these are vectors in space. They give us both the direction and the size. So just read about vectors if you haven't. Really simple mathematics stuff. Uh, it seems hard and complicated in the beginning, but it really isn't. It really, really isn't. Trust me. Uh, just check those out. Um, but yeah, otherwise, thanks for watching so much. Take care and check out the description box. And I'll see you guys and girls in the next one, all right? Bye-bye.